Welcome back to a new section where we'll be exploring SaaS and really adding a powerful new skill into your bucket of creating user interfaces. So the first step is we're going to show you how to integrate CSS into any project that is a React project. And once we've done that, we'll move on into SaaS itself as we explore the creation of SaaS variables, how to import external SaaS files, and even how to work with SaaS mixins. Now in the next section, we'll do a little bit more SaaS. You're not going to get a, become a master SaaSer, but you'll definitely have enough skills to start working with it and start exploring it as soon as you finish the section. So let's jump right into our first lecture, because in our first lecture, we're going to be dynamically adding CSS files with the help of Webpack. And that is basically done using the CSS Loader and Extract Text Webpack plugin. We'll take a look at both of them and how to work with them to get to create a dynamically loaded up CSS file. All right, we're almost ready to move into SAS, an incredibly powerful and interesting and very cool preprocessor for CSS. But before we even do that, we really need the help of Webpack to get even CSS to run in our application. So to do that, I'm going to go into my terminal and I'm just going to go ahead and stop the server that is currently running. And I'm going to go ahead and install a couple of packages and more explicitly, I'm going to install two packages. So I'm going to go ahead and npm install. I want to save it into the dev environment. And I want a new loader, which is called CSS loader, but because I want to create something a little bit more fancy, I'm also going to call for the extract text webpack plugin, a real, a real mouthful type of plugin. Okay. We're going to see how to work with it. It's quite simple, but incredibly powerful. So as it's installing, I'm going to show you how do we get CSS to basically compile on the fly. So to do that, I'm going to go into my, webpack um, config file and i'm going to go ahead before i'm actually exporting anything i'm going to go ahead and create a new const and i'm going to call it extract text plugin now you could call it whatever you want but the most important thing is that you require the extract text webpack plug in now we're not doing es6 here because we're just not although technically we could in this version of Node.js that I'm working on. But just for the sake, if you're actually not running on the latest version, then we'll still work. So we're, we're doing the, not ES5 per se, but this is the way Node.js natively would load up external plugins. So we're loading in that extract, similarly to how we use the extract command, import and export in ES6. Okay, so now that we have that text plugin, I'm going to go ahead and add another loader. We already have one loader that loads in our JavaScript and compiles it down to ES5. I also want to load up anything that is a CSS file dynamically. And this time around, whenever, and I'm just going to copy this test. We're not going to have any exclusions, by the way. And whenever we have a file that is a .css, what I would like to do is I would like to send it into our extract pub plug blah, 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 blah. extract pub uh, what am I doing extract text plugin but as we're sending it through I'm going to also send it through the CSS loader so the CSS loader will take that CSS and send it to basically a text basically it's almost like a text editor the text extract pub plugin now this part is actually the loader part so let me just configure it to be the loader so we're loading in that loader sending it wrapping it as to the text plugin and last but not least i almost forgot to extract so i'm using the method of extract extracting out the css itself converting it into a text now that i have it the last thing that's left for me to do to actually get the basic construct working is to go ahead and add another plugin and i'm going to do that after our modules so let me just break the line a little bit and here i'm going to add a plugin i'm going to add plugins and this is going to be an array and I'm just going to send in one plugin, which is going to be a new extract text plugin. And literally, I'm going to go ahead and define the file name that I wanted to extract to. In this case, I want to call it app.css. So all that hard work that was done is going to basically make sure that anytime I try to import any CSS, it will capture it 
wrap it and extract it into the extract text plugin and then all that's left for me is to set up that plugin to make sure that it's going to render into an app.css now to actually be able to test it out i'm going to go into my browser and i'm going to also add another link here and my secondary link is just going to go to the actual app css because it's going to be a global item i'm not putting it in a subfolder Let's go ahead and test it out. And to be able to test it out, I'm going to go into my app itself and I'm going to go, oh, even before that, I'm going to go into my source and I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call this, um, what am I going to, I need to call it a different name than app. So, so I'm going to call it app source dot CSS. And let me just save that as app source dot CSS in the same folder where my app is. And let's go ahead and create a little bit of HTML. So how about we put into our HTML some really basic stuff? How about we go to our app and we extract out this extra styling that we've placed here. If I just grab this whole baby out, I'm going to cut it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and try to put that style in directly as another class. So I'm going to set your class to Jumbotron, an extra class that will be called, uh, let's call this bat. I have no idea why, but now ah, let's give it a, a fair name. So uh, custom, how about that? So we have some custom CSS. Let me just go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go into my CSS, add custom. And our custom will basically have a background image. And it's also going to have a color. Okay, so that's good as well. And we don't need all that. So we have here some custom CSS, which we're then importing. Okay, beautiful. Now. Last, last but not least is to actually also import it. So I'm going to go into my import statements and I'm going to just go ahead and just directly import it without calling it. I'm going to call it app source dot CSS. And if I go ahead and save this, go back to my server, make sure that I start it. And if I don't have any errors, let's see if we're having any publishing errors, no publishing errors. Let's check if we have any errors in our application and it's refreshing and and then and, and we have an error. Okay, so first of all, our error while compiling is it's trying to read the app source.css but without success. It's unexpected. It can't parse it. You may need an appropriate loader to handle this file type, which we sure do. That's why we've added it into our config, but I might have not clicked on the save button, which I do that sometimes. So let's give that another shot. Let's break out, clear, run it one more time. Hopefully now it's going to capture it. No errors here. Let's see if we, once we refresh, let's give it a refresh. Here we go. We're starting to get warmer. So we're not having an error, but because our HTML needs to be updated as well, let me click here on refresh because we also need to make sure that our uh, CSS is updated. But if I go and check this file, the app dot, if I go and check app dot CSS, let's see if we're getting our CSS that we've included. And we sure are getting that CSS included. So the question is, why aren't you working? Although technically you are working. Isn't that crazy stuff? So let's check it out. So we have your custom. That is good. We definitely have also custom. And if we take out local host again in our 3000, because now we're debugging. I have no idea why it's not working because it looks like it's creating it. We have here our custom, uh, but it's not rendering it out. Let's see if in our inspector, first of all, we see it's overridden. It's actually, what's the error? Invalid. Okay, that's good. Invalid property type, beautiful. Okay, I already see what my problem is. In our app source, I don't need here to have your quotes because we're inside a CSS. And, 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 what else is wrong here? Well, now it's not rendering at all. So let's see what's the error now. Fail to build, not found, cannot find file, directory, fi image, folder. Oh, mm, that's interesting. What's actually happening is because we are in a file, basically it's relative. So I want to tell it, don't be relative. There's no relativity really going around here. And if we're ready here, let's also fix our white to be uh, without the quotes because it's not a string in CSS. And let's go ahead and give it one more shot. And here we go. We have ourselves our CSS exported. And the beautiful thing about this is that we could have multiple CS CSS files, that is. And anytime we click on import, we could then add it in dynamically, building up our app.css dynamically, which means that we could create a CSS for each button, each component separately. 
But we're not going to do go down that path. We're actually going to go a different path, which is SAS, which we'll explore in the next lecture now that we know how to integrate CSS into a React project the right way. In this lecture, we saw how to dynamically add CSS into our file, and we're ready to start moving into SAS.